And we welcome you back to Redbud. We're in Buchanan, Michigan for the Scott USA Pro Motocross Nationals. Right now, let's check in with Jamie Little. Well, photo one with any indication, we're going to see a great battle between these two riders, Ivan Tedesco and Davey Millsap. Davey Millsap's coming off his best ever moto finish in the Outdoor Nationals. And that's a fourth right behind this guy who finished third. Guys? All right, thank you, Jamie. As we take a look at our Honda starting grid, it's James Stewart, Mike Brown, Brock Kepler, all usual suspects are there. Keep your eye on Josh Grant. That kid had a great run in the first moto, Cameron, and the kid just seems to get better and better every week as we look at the rest of the field as they'll go at it. The key here, Cameron, I guess, keeping Bubby in it under wraps. It really is. you got to get out in front of him, and this start, very technical. Look at the mud. You can see where they're coming out. Bubba again kind of mid. Oh! Stewart goes down and goes down hard. Oh, and he is right back up. Couple riders tangled up with him. That's Daryl Hurley. Hurley's there. Tedesco's in there. Bubba gets to his bike first. I don't think Hurley's in any hurry. It looks like he's injured his arm. Bubba gets the bike started up again. Hitting up wow. on. Hit, see him hitting up there on the left side, either hitting up the uh, the guard that he has on, or maybe trying to hit up his clutch lever. And well, your leader, you're just talking about him, Josh Grant. This isn't the first time we've seen him in front at Hangtown. We saw him out front only to stall his motorcycle. Maybe a rookie mistake. He wasn't able to get it started again, but see a couple riders definitely. Oh, Bill Saps and Hepler. So the two young guns going at it right now. Bill Saps and Hepler just in front of them is number three, Mike Brown, who finished second in motor number one. But it is Josh Grant out in front leading the way. And taking a look back at the start, you see. James getting the wheel up, which is not a good way to come out of the gate. Gets behind a couple riders and see if we can see who he actually tangles with. Looks like he hooks on the outside. Oh, and then just gets plowed by Daryl Hurley. He's gonna have a reverse 46 tattooed on his chest. Bubba jumps up quickly though, but Cameron, you're right. He got drilled by Hurley's front wheel. Ivan Tedesco also down in that one. We'll keep an eye on both of them, but Hurley looks like he took the worst of that. As we go back to the racing, this is motor number two, so everything being shaken up. James Stewart literally in last place. And Josh Grant, as we said, he's uh, not his first time leading. We'll see if he can keep it together. And Millsap trying to get on the gas, and he put together two good photos. I mean, a couple of the guys that finished in front of him going down, so this really is going to help him out as well as Mike Brown, who decided to go by in the picture. Well, as the track continues to get rutted up here at Redbud, James Bubba Stewart will have to work his way through a very large and very fast field today. But if anyone can do it, it'll be James, and he is on the gas and moving. And there he is, way far back. And you see him looking for different lines, trying to stop kind of big corner, go inside, and then comes around the outside. And, oh, still with the Bubba Scrub. And that looks like Greg Snell, right in front of him. Well, we've seen Bubba do this before, Cameron, go from dead last and come back to win the race. But today, the way Mike Brown, Hepler, Millsaps, and even Josh Grant are running, is it doable on a track that this rutted out? Well, this is going to be one of the tougher ways to do it with the mud and the ruts. But we saw him just a year and a race ago, actually, going back to Bud's Creek, wadded up in that second moto, and came back to one of the most impressive moto performances ever from last to first and getting the overall win. Well, he is going to go through a stack of tear-offs today because he is going to have to work his way through a very large pack. The mud is out. Bubba is on the prowl and moving. He's doing the Bubba scrub, but he looks to be pressing it just a little bit. He's definitely working hard. It looks like his bars are twisted a bit there. You can see maybe the right side down a bit. Maybe when you, you know, you can see elbow down a little bit more than usual on one side. And, coming up. Oh! oh! Goes down again! So, so Bubba may be pressing it just a little bit too hard. Gets out in that real soft stuff. And again, he's got an issue with that left side of the handlebar. Yeah, you can see the, the, the guard is way up. And maybe now something's locked up. He's starting to try to go. He throws the motorcycle or actually comes off the motorcycle. This is really uncharacteristic of Bubba. A couple crashes. You see the fans there. Well, the fans that wanted to front row view of Bubba. This is not what they had in mind. Now he moves back to 35th place, and he is just in a world of hurt. The bike 
mentally, physically, I think Bubba's really got some distress going on. The thing that always scares me about professional motocross racing, they get back on the motorcycle, they start jamming after it's been down to the ground, and Ivan Tedesco's also been down in. So Tedesco is in a world of hurt, like Bubba Stewart. Listen to it one more time. Watch him go to the outside. Just starts to lose the front wheel, and he does what he should do. He stays on the gas to try to keep it going, but not able to keep it upright. Josh Grant, number 386. Cameron, this kid is for real. Just think about it. A few months ago, he was running the Saturday races at Glen Helen. <laughs> yeah, coming up the amateur ranks and maybe a little bit forgot some of the counterparts in his age group. Davey Millsap already has come up and Bubba before him, much heralded. And then after him, they're talking about Michael Lessie, but this guy's won championships. He has a Loretta Lynn's championship. He's won at Mammoth just last year at Ponca City, so no stranger to win, and it's definitely, as we've seen in the pro ranks, he's got the skills to battle with the big names. Well, the folks in Factory Connection and Shift happy that he is on board their stuff, so Josh Grant continues to lead this motor number one, and give a shout out to your boy Ryan Mills. Maybe his string of bad luck has come to an end. Yeah, I don't know what's been going on with Mills, but I know at one point towards the end of the Supercross season, his puka shell neck was broke, actually, when he got that little scuffle, and he hasn't been running it. I'm going to have to ask if he's got the puka shells back on because he's got his speed back, and, you know, the first moto wasn't great for him, but right now he's running great here in the second moto. So right now it is Grant and Mills going one and two. Bubba runs in 35th, Tedesco in 36th, Josh Grant, an eighth place finish in motor number one. So Cameron, he's sitting pretty for some podium. He definitely is, especially with, like we said, Stewart and Tedesco are out of the points right now. Only the top 20 get points. And Mills, who finished in 14th position in the first moto, looking good right now. He's got a little company. Mike Brown on the gas, on board the Yamaha. Brownie out of Tennessee, currently running very fast. This is the Brownie we saw last year doing the battles with Rhino and the rest of the crew, he has found his rhythm. So Mike Brown is putting the pressure on, currently running in third, Millsap to fifth, we'll be back after this. Welcome back to Redbud 125, moto number two. This is Ivan Jesko coming through. And he launches it, Cameron. <laughs> Listen to the fans out there. They're cheering for him, they love it. Oh, and I love that too. Well, the fans combined with that four-stroke, Ivan Tedesco, the good news is he's safe, he's up and riding. The bad news is he's running about 29th right now, so he's out of the points. But meanwhile, back in the front of the pack, this is Josh Grant with Mike Brown close behind. Brown doesn't need the pass for the win. Let's check in with Jamie. Mike, Josh Grant's turning a lot of hands, obviously running up front right now. Do you think he has the composure to hold on to it till the end? Yes, I think he's it. Um, he's been training with Jeff Statton, and he's been here for a week, so I think he's got. It, I think he's got it in him to do it. A little intimidating with Mike Brown breathing down his neck. Yes, it is. But I think he can do it. Well, Josh Grant looking very smooth, Cameron, and for somewhat of a rookie out here, he's he's running with the big dogs. I don't know what would be more intimidating: training with Jeff Statton or having Mike really. Brown breathing down your neck. Oh, look at this! He's going for it. Brownie taking the outside line. Will he try to bust Morocco's lead? And whether he wanted to or not is a mystery because Josh Grant was in front of him in the line. Oh! Josh Grant loses his line right there, and just as we say that, Mike Brown clears and takes a look over his shoulder and says, going to get Jeff Stanton working on you a little bit more. Brownie's coming through, and he inherits the lead. So Mike Brown is your leader here in moto number two of Red Bud and he has looked smooth all day long. And if they finish just like this, Josh Grant moving back, that is gonna give him enough points for third overall today, second in this photo, third overall, and Brownie would take home the big win, which he hasn't had in, well, like we were talking about, a year, and just a little bit more, back at Mount Morris last year. Ryan Mills, number 44, coming through on the factory connection ride. He currently sits in third place. So the leaderboard is a skew. We are normally used to seeing a 259 up there, a 29 up there. Right now it is the Mike Brown show with two youngsters in tow. I like the youngsters in tow. Let's get those guys together to do a little bit of battling. 
have some fun out there. Mill Saps and Hepler also trying to get in on the action, grab some points and possibly make it to the podium. But this is Brian Mills, number 44, looking very good. As Cameron pointed out, he's had a streak of bad luck. But today, he has found his rhythm at Redbud. He has indeed, and Brock Hepler with a crash in the first moto. A little tough on the points, but right now, he's showing that he is so quick. It just comes up on the inside of Mills. I'm not sure if Mills just kind of went outside saying, hey, I'm having a good run right now. Let's not dice and let's not tangle up with Hepler. We'll see if he tries to come back here. Brock Hepler out of Katane, Pennsylvania, moves into third place on board of Suzuki, number 60, the youngster. Looking very good with all kinds of promise. Remember, next year on the Supercross circuit, he'll be teamed with Ricky Carmichael, possibly Travis Pastrana, and don't forget Davey Millsap. That is quite a tent. That is an amazing uh, group of riders, and there's some amazing talk going on out there. I mean, just dropping some talk on you. James Stewart having a tough one, throwing it up. Well, Cameron, I think he is calling on the powers above, but I think right now he could use the Pep Boys and J-Bone because his bike looks like it is all but done. Tough photo for James Stewart and always the test of a true champion isn't, isn't when you win, but sometimes when you just can't even finish, you, you know, see reactions and how you rebound and might be testing that out on James Stewart. Well, what do you think? I mean, we're not close enough to see. We'll have to talk to, to mechanic Jeremy Albrecht, but it looks like he's lost something with his clutch because it doesn't look like he's able to shift. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's, it's so hard to speculate from the side of the course. The bike stopped, then it got going again, and I'm not sure. But the pace he's keeping at would indicate that he's, he's pretty much just sticking it in one gear. Yeah, that, that would be a possibility. The one thing is he's jumping, you know, even jumping that little jump, and if you have a problem with your clutch and slipping or you're out, your transmission shifted on its own or whatever, I mean, you may not want to be doing those jumps. And it, you remember back to the start of the race, he got totally T-boned, so the bike probably took a little damage then. Meanwhile, to the front of the pack, the guys who are having no problems right now, Davey Millsaps, Ryan Mills, and the rest of the crew. And number 188, Millsaps, another kid who will be under the auspices of Roger McCoster, not a bad tutor. Definitely not, and having Ricky on your team. And I was kind of going towards a rumor just a little bit ago. We might just drop it Go in ahead, there. But drop that, it, drop it. You know, that, uh, that Jeremy McGrath rumor yeah. coming back to Supercross just won't go away. And, you know, now we're hearing uh, some rumors. I mean, could be red bikes, could be, you know, any color bike. But we are hearing something about the Moto World team. So we'll just drop that on you folks and fans just for the fun of it. But we're we'll talking Steel, about it. Always trying to educate. When we come back, we'll wrap this up from Redbud after this. The 2004 AMA Chevrolet Motocross Championship has been brought to you by Suzuki, maker of performance-driven motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. By Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. By Chevrolet, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months. The new Chevrolet is an American revolution. And by Cycle World Magazine, the most widely read and trusted source of motorcycling information. And we are back to Red Bud, and this is not the site you were hoping to see. James Bubba Stewart and Jeremy Albrecht going to work on that left side, Cameron. And as we suspected, it looks like the clutch is, is pretty much seized up. And you can see Jabo there, he's working on clutch adjustment, trying to get some lever there, so definitely a clutch issue. Well, we can speculate all we want, but right now, Jamie Little's making her way down to the scene, and hopefully she can talk to James Stewart and find out exactly what's going on with his bike. Jamie, what do you know? Hey, James, what happened out there? Um, lost the clutch. We kind of, first going to pile up, lost the clutch, and, um, just keeps shutting off and stuff, so, uh, pretty good. I'm still good in the point, so. Go back and uh, figure it out. Keeps it interesting for everybody else. Unfortunately, not for you. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't like it. <laughs> so, hey, it gives you something to work for, right? Yeah. So uh, I'll go back next week. Uh, it's over now. Um, I'm, I'm like the Detroit Pistons. I'm pissed. So go back and uh, regroup and be done. 
All right, I hate to see James Stewart out, but it does keep it interesting, guys. He's won all the motos over the last year, and as he sits on the ground, first DNF we've seen from James. Cameron, I think he has summed it up best. He is not happy. Uh, definitely not happy. Uh, this guy, though, he doesn't know what's going on behind him. Coin. But uh, he is going to gain some valuable points on James Stewart. Mike Brown has run a great race today here at Redbud. Not only in moto number one, where he got second place, but moto number two, where it looks like he's going to go on and pick up a victory. James Stewart has never gotten second place, so we'll point that out. This DNF will drop him down to the points for the standings, but I bet he still finishes in the top ten today. Well, yeah, when you take that moto win and how many points you get for it, he's pretty much a shoo-in for that, but really unfortunate. The good news is, though, after seeing him get smashed by Daryl Hurley in that start crash, he's all right. He's talking to his mom there on the, on the side of the course there by the fence, so... You know, he's walking around and he's healthy. That's the important part. But he's definitely going to be a little banged up and bruised, I think, come tomorrow. This is the battle for second place right now. Josh Grant doing battle with number 60. That's Brock Heffer on board the Suzuki. Talk about the future of motocross and supercross, Cameron. I mean, you're looking at it right here. Yeah, youthful exuberance, I was going to say. These guys have the energy, and they're both really fit and after. You talk to them after motos, and you go down to the pits, and... They're not even really like all that worked up over it, so looking for maybe a good race here towards the end of the moto. Brock Kepler moving up through the pack, currently sits in third place. Just ahead of him is Josh Grant. This is moto number two from Redbud. Both of them decide to air it out just a little bit, see if they can close in on Mike Brown. And it looks like Hepler takes a smarter line, but Josh Grant grabs a rut a little sooner and he exits quicker. And they're both choosing different lines. I think it might just be Hepler trying to get a different line around him and check this out last lap for the 386 can he hold it together well mike brown hearing every single nut and bolt on that bike hoping his bike stays together hoping the mud hasn't built up too much but it's the white flag lap for mike brown and this should be a very well-deserved victory for brownie kind of oh Bad news there, that's his Bruce Mobile Yamaha of Troy teammate. Brock Sellers down, let's find out exactly what happened. And he airs out that, oh, oh the braking bump after the big jump, and oh, the bike just goes tumbling. And, wow, that was a tough looking crash for Brock Sellers. Well, Brock was sitting up, moving all extremities, that's the good news. The bad news is he's probably out of the race. Meanwhile, number three, Mike Brown gets an opportunity to enjoy this last lap and do a little celebrating. The Yamaha rider is going to bring home the checkered flag, and by virtue of his victory here at Red Bud, Brownie will get the overall, and he is taking no chances through here, Cameron. Yeah, definitely not attacking the whoops as we've, as we've seen in laps past, and this right here is last corner. The crowd stoked for him as well. Your winner at Red Bud, Mike Brown. So number three, Brownie brings it home on board the Yamaha. The guy's got a sweet crib, and now he's got a nice trophy as he takes the overall. As we look at the Suzuki results, it's Brown, Grant, and Hepler, Millsaps, and Ramsey round out the top five. So with your finishes going down like that, let's send it down to Jamie Little, who is standing by with a very happy Mike Brown, not only the moto winner, but the overall winner. So Mike Brown is your overall winner with a 2-1 finish. Mike, congratulations. How does it feel to be the first winner to win besides James Stewart in over a year? Feels like my first win ever. <laughs> no, it's good. I've been working hard. You know, I know he must have had trouble or whatever, but I was ready to do more battle than I did the first moto. No, I felt good. My bike was awesome. My body was ready to take, see whatever he can have. I know you were out front, but when you did find out that James went down, did it change your mental strategy at all? Yeah, I slowed, slowed down a little bit. I didn't want to push it until I crashed, you know. I thought he was coming. I didn't know until they told me he was DNF, and then I slacked it off. But at the beginning, I was just going as hard as I can go to get more distance I can. As we take a look at the Suzuki overall results, it's Brownie going 2-1, and one, getting the victory, followed by Millsaps, Grant, Ramsey, Heffler, Runcata, Stewart finishes in seventh. Right now, let's send it back down to Jamie. What was the difference this week? Because you definitely have been struggling. You've had that long learning curve. What was different this weekend? I had a, 
I had a bet going that if I, you know, if I did good, or if I, let's just say if I won or whatever, I got a Corvette. So, I don't know. The guy said that the fourth counted as a win, and I don't know what second overall game is. So, we'll see when, we'll see in two weekends. So, what are you going to get out of this deal? Hoping a Corvette. <laughs> Well, a Corvette or a Geo, we'll have to find out. After five races, it's James Stewart with a 225, Mike Brown behind him, and Brock Hepler currently sitting in third. We say so long from Redbud. For Cameron Steele and Jamie Little, I'm Todd Harris saying this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Your winner, Mike Brown.